On this first episode of Hands on Android, I show some of my favorite tips and tricks for crafting how I spend my time on my phone smartly with Google's digital well being features. Hands on Android is brought to you from LastPass Studios. You're focused on security, but are your employees? LastPass can ensure that they are by making access and authentication seamless. Visit lastpass.com slash twit to learn more. This is Twit. Hello and welcome to the premiere episode of my newest show for Twit, Hands on Android. Where All About Android, my other Android show on the network, focuses on what's going on in the world of Android. Hands on Android is focused on what's going on in the palm of your hand. I'm honored to be the one to help you use your Android device better, faster, and smarter. And to that end, today, I'm going to spend some time demystifying a feature that is very in vogue on smartphones right now, and that's digital wellness. I know for myself, I've ridden the wave from smartphone novice years ago to smartphone fiend, where literally all my time was spent on the device, to now, where I'm hyper-focused on reconnecting with the real world and doing what I can to curb my smartphone use a little bit. Don't get me wrong, I still love my phones, but I also love my analog life, and I found for myself the desire to stay connected with that, which means pulling back a bit from being always on and always connected to the internet via my smartphone. Google released the digital well-being tool set a few years back, and it's improved over time, and I'm a pretty big user of its features, so I thought I'd showcase what's worked for me to bring me to where I am now. Okay, so let's take a look. So taking a look at the phone, what you see here actually is Android 10. I'm running Android 10 on my Pixel 4 XL. And that's important because starting in Android 10, digital well-being was actually baked into the OS. So it's uh, not something that you have to have a separate app for. You can put an app icon in your, in your launcher if you want. Uh, but really, you're going to find it in your settings. So go into your settings and you will find uh, in the main layout of the settings here, as you can see down here, is a digital well-being setting icon and we'll go in there. Now what you get initially is you get your app usage. This is really handy to know what apps you're actually using most, right? If you, if you go onto this chart and you see just a ton of Twitter usage, maybe that's an indication to you that you may want to pair back your Twitter usage a little bit. Thankfully, Digital Wellbeing gives you tools in order to do that. But it's really handy. It's got this nice circular tab. It's really easy to read. So far, I have 15 unlocks, 66 notifications that have passively uh, passed through my device. Um, and any of these apps, so if I tap on this, this is a meditation app that I use, you can kind of see a little bit of the history as far as what I've, uh, what my usage has been on that app. Right now, today, you're seeing uh, I used about 20 minutes of it earlier. If I wanted to, I could go in here and I could actually set a timer on this. So if it was Twitter, for example, and I wanted to set my timer to 30 minutes a day, I tap on that and boom, I have the ability to do it. Of course, with meditation, I won't put any limits on that. I'm going to keep that wide open. So I'm not going to limit myself on meditation app. But you have the control, the ability to do that. You just tap into it and it goes, well, there you go. It goes right in and you have that control. Now what you see below, this is where it gets into the things that I actually use pretty frequently down here. Now dashboard, first and foremost, this is kind of a, a collection of all the different app timers that you may have set. This is another way to get to your app timers. I don't really use app timers a whole lot. Um, but if you come out here, you'll see wind down. Now, I love wind down. This is a group of settings and options that basically encourages you to end your smartphone usage on any given day. And there's a number of different ways that you can get it to kind of politely encourage you to put that smartphone down. You can see up here is a little bit of a calendar, a little schedule. Uh, I have it so that wind down is active. It starts at 10 p.m. every evening and it ends at 7 a.m. in the morning and it's seven days a week. So this sucker kicks in seven days a week for me. Uh, one of the things that I really like about it is that it has this feature for grayscale. What is grayscale? This basically means it removes all the color from your UI, which makes a whole lot of sense. It's grayscale after all. But what that does is once that grayscale kicks in, it's kind of a reminder to you that, oh, maybe I'm using my smartphone beyond the point that I told myself I, I wanted to stop, let's say. Um, it's also kind of encourages you to stop because 
certain apps, certain games, they just aren't as enjoyable when you remove all the color, or maybe it makes it impossible to play. All these little triggers that it may seem a little ridiculous that we need these things to curb our usage if that's what we're going for, but they're nice tools to have regardless, and I know they're gonna work for some people. They might not work for everyone. They work for me. Now below that is do not disturb. Of course, this is a, this is a very useful feature that I'm gonna get into in a second. You will notice that I keep that off. That's because of a setting a little bit later that I'm gonna get into momentarily. Now down here is nightlight. Nightlight is also very uh, effective. Basically what it does is it eliminates the blue light on the display and that reduces eye strain at night and encourages better sleep, that sort of thing. So what I do is I have that active from 9 p.m. to 7 a.m. So right around 9 p.m., if I'm still awake, the blue light is gonna be removed from my display. This is supposed to be better for my circadian rhythms so that when I do go to sleep, my mind isn't active and kind of riled up uh, because of the blue light that comes in through screens and also other lights throughout your home, that sort of stuff. It's something that you hear a lot of sleep experts talking about. These are settings that dial right into that. I have that start at 9 p.m. and it's effective for me. So that's wind down. Now, if we go back here, uh, focus mode. Now, focus mode is uh, a feature that I don't personally use a whole lot myself, but it is very powerful. Essentially, what you can do is you can go through this list of apps you can see up there, I have YouTube uh, triggered as one of the apps. And you can select the apps that are most likely to distract you when you need to focus. So maybe what you're trying to do is improve your productivity at work. And you have your smartphone on you and you know that YouTube is always calling at you because there's a cute dog video or something uh, that you might wanna watch. If you put that in here and then you activate focus mode, essentially what it will do is it will mute, it will pause those apps. It says distracting apps are paused. And if I go to my home screen, you'll notice right here where my YouTube icon is, it's grayed out. I can't even, I can't even launch it. I try to, it says focus mode is on. You cannot do that. I could select to take a break, but that's an active choice that I'm making in that moment. There's a little bit of kind of uh, self-regulating that goes into this sort of thing. So uh, if you set that limit for yourself, hey, why not pay attention to it? So that's what focus mode is all about. I don't generally use that a whole lot, but it is powerful if you need that extra uh, that extra kick in the pants. Now down here, these are the, the items that help you reduce interruptions and uh, managing notifications, of course. This is really handy because it allows you to get into intricate detail as you can see, just going into digital well-being as the app in general, I can deactivate all notifications for this app, or I can deactivate certain types of notifications from this app. If I went into, let's see here, what's a, what's a good one? Uh, oh, and you can also see the last time you got a notification. So you start to get a sense of like the frequency with which you're being distracted by these notifications. Messages, for example, do I want all notifications from my messages app coming through? Uh, do I want only incoming messages too? And it even tells me I get about nine of these roughly per day. So that's a lot of distraction. Maybe I wanna curb that and I could. I could deactivate that and set it for more of a situation where I go into the app purposefully to check my messages instead of being uh, responding reactively to these notifications as they occur. A lot of flexibility there and it can take a little bit of time, don't get me wrong, but it's worth the effort. Now finally, probably my favorite section, that's just because I customize this like crazy and it really helps my life to kind of eliminate the distractions for the things that are really important and that is of course, do not disturb. I talked about it a little bit earlier uh, in the wind down section, how I keep it off in the wind down section. And I'll tell you why here in a second. But if we go into this do not disturb section, we have all sorts of controls for what happens when our phone is on do not disturb. You can see it up there in the quick settings. I activate this and deactivate this regularly throughout the day because I don't wanna be distracted depending on what I happen to be doing. Well, you can automate that. And that's what this section is all about. When that do not disturb uh, feature is activated, what happens? Well, I can make it so that calls that come in are entirely blocked or only allowed from certain contacts in my contact role. Uh, specifically, I have it set that only my starred contacts will actually be able to cut through that do not disturb blockage. Uh, same for SMS 
MMS, and all of my messaging apps. I could set that so that only certain uh, contacts could get through, or none at all. Like maybe messages just aren't as important to me. Uh, that's entirely up to you. And there are a bunch of exceptions as well in here when it's on. I have those two controls as well as like, do I want alarms to happen when Do Not Disturb is on? Of course I do, because I don't want to sleep through that alarm in the morning. So I have that as an exception along with playing media sounds. So I can hear media sounds. Maybe I want to play a video, that sort of stuff. Go through here and really think about the use case and what's going to happen when this happens in your life if you have Do Not Disturb on. That's why you have all those settings. You can also restrict your notifications. So when notifications come in, what do you see when Do Not Disturb is on? Maybe you don't uh, have any sounds of notifications, but you still see them. Or maybe nothing happens. You don't see or hear anything because you'll get to that when DND is deactivated later. And you can really get in there on a customizable level and really kind of hone in on exactly what you need out of your notifications. It's very powerful. Uh, how long does it stay on, of course, until you turn it off? It's how I have it set here, but you can make it so that when it's put on, it automatically comes off an hour later, that sort of stuff. And finally, the schedules. This is what I think is just really powerful here, is automating DND mode. So all about Android. Tech News Weekly, I have different settings for both of those events. When I'm doing a show, I don't want a call to break through. I don't want a message to appear on my screen when I'm reviewing an app. So I have those controls dialed in so that uh, nothing happens. If I go into custom here, uh, allow from starred contacts, I might want to hear from a starred contact if there's an absolute emergency, but I don't want any messages to appear because bad things happen, so I have that deactivated. Uh, same for nightly. I told you earlier that I choose to automate my nightly do not disturb features here instead of on the wind down page. And that's just because I, have a, I feel like I have a little bit more extra control outside of the default, which is what the wind down page defaults to is your default setting. Here, I can isolate it and set it uh, to my own liking. There is also flip to shh, and this is actually a pixel uh, exclusive feature. This basically means anytime I set my phone on the, on the table upside down, uh, it automatically goes into do not disturb mode. When I pick it back up, it switches away from that and uh, we're all good. The only other thing you're going to find in here, actually, I'm not going to talk about in this episode, and that's parental controls. That's down at the very bottom of the digital well-being section. This is part of Family Link, another app that I use very regularly with my kids and in my family, and that's for another episode. All right, more tips, tricks, explainers, and so many other things are in store for you each and every week here on Hands On Android. If you happen to have any questions, I'd certainly love to try my best to answer them. Send an email with your question to handsonandroid at twit.tv. New episodes publish every Thursday, so make sure you subscribe at twit.tv slash HOA. You can also find the show on YouTube and subscribe there. Basically, we're everywhere. We'll see you next time on Hands on Android.